identification identification of chirocarbons can seem tricky it can seem scary because generally we give you really really big compounds to do it on but it's actually not that bad once you learn it so here are loads and loads of examples for you if you want a hard copy of what's in this workbook you can go and get that over my website good luck guys When we are talking about chiral carbons, we are looking at optical isomers down here. So this part of isomerism, um, where you've got two mirror images that are non-superimposable upon each other. And the reason for this is because of the chiral carbon in the middle. Now, if we look at this molecule here, you can see that the carbon in the middle, the black carbon in the middle, has four different groups attached to it. And that is the important thing. That is what we're looking for when we have chiral carbons. So here is it being reflected in a mirror. And then by um, some fancy jiggery pokery, you didn't see that, well, you didn't see my hand moving there, I promise you didn't. You will see that there is now an identical molecule, but it is the mirror image. So these two are going to be not non-superimposable upon each other and the reason for this the important thing is this chiral carbon in the middle here and this is going to lead to a lot of differences in these compounds they are going to have different structures in space which is going to lead to them having different interactions with things which is going to lead to them having different chemical and biological functions so when we're trying to identify a chiral carbon, we need to find a carbon that has three different things on it. Now, you'll get quick at this. You're going to have to get quick at this because the examples like throw nasty ones at you. Um, but the easiest way to do it at the beginning is just to work your way through. So let's look at this carbon here. It's not chiral because it's got a hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen off it. This carbon here is chiral because it has this group. It has this group, it has this group, and then it has the hydrogen that we haven't written on here. So this carbon here is a chiral carbon. For the rest of them, let me just rub all this out, the rest of them aren't chiral because if we look at them, look at this one here, it's got this group, it's got this group, but then it's got two hydrogens. This one's not chiral because it's got three hydrogens. So the only chiral carbon is that one in the middle there. Any carbon that has a double bond coming off it is not going to be chiral. If we look, for example, at this carbon here, it has this group coming off it, it has this group coming off it, and it has this group coming off it. So yes, they are all different, but there's only three of them, so it's not going to be chiral. Again, if we look at this one in the middle here, we've got group one, group two and group three but again only three groups looking at this one here we have group one we have group two and we have group three three groups does not make it chiral it needs four groups Okay, looking at the carbons at the end, this one, this one, this one, and this one are not chiral. This one is not chiral because this group here is the same as this group here. If we look at this one, we've got this group, we've got this group, we've got this group, and we've got hydrogens. So this one here is a chiral carbon. Moving on to this one, we've got this group, we've got this group, and then we've got two hydrogens. So this one has um, only one chiral carbon. Um, if you want to have a go at naming these, you can, but these, com these molecules are going to get really, really complicated, so please don't get too hung up on that. Looking at this one here, moving along, we can see carbon here, no, that's a sulfur, no, no, yes because that's going to be one group that's one group that's one group um, and we're going to have a hydrogen up here so that one there is chiral this one has a double bond so it's not uh, next one here um, we have no no yes that one is going to have this group here this group here 
and this group here. No, because we have two carbons. Um, no, because well, we've got a double bond in here. Um, otherwise, we're good. Okay, these are starting to get a bit complicated now. Um, this isn't the most complicated one that I've seen in the exam. Um, they do get more complicated than this, I'm afraid to say. Um, we can just count everything with um, a double bond, so that's quite a lot of the carbon's gone. Um, all of these have double bonds, this one has nitrogen. Um, double bond, this one has two carbons, two carbons, this is a nitrogen. So the only one here that is going to be chiral is this carbon here. Now interestingly, just as a point of interest, this is the lidamide. And it is that tricksy uh, chiral carbon in the middle there that makes it from a useful drug into um, a drug that causes quite a lot of damage. Um, it's the, the difference in the shape that the chiral carbon gives it. Okay, here we have glucose. Um, now, things may have more than one chiral carbon, you need to be good at identifying them. So this is an oxygen, that's not going to work. This is has two car hydrogens off it, that's not going to work. But this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one are all chiral carbons. So you can see, um, this is glucose, there are actually a large number of different ways that glucose can be arranged. Um, you are going to need to get good at this. I've seen some horrifically um, complicated ones used in exams before. Um, if you want more examples than this, you can pop over to my classroom channel. Phenylalanine here. Now, to make this quick, we can discount everything that has a double bond on it, anything that has two carbons on it. So our only chiral carbon is going to be this one here. This group, this group, this group, and the hydrogen group here. Cytosine here, that is the C that makes up um, your DNA. Um, again, anything with a double bond, we can immediately discount. This is a nitrogen. So now we're going to this half of the molecule. Um, so if we look at this carbon here, we have one group, we have two groups, we have three groups, and we have our carbon, our hydrogen, sorry. This hydrogen here, we have one group, we have two groups, we have three groups, and we have our hydrogen, that is four. And this carbon here, we have one group, we have two groups, we have three groups, and we have our hydrogen here. This one has two hydrogens off of it, so it is not chiral. This is um, amoxicillin, which is used as an antibiotic. Our chiral carbons are going to be there. Um, moving across, we've got another one there. Um, we have another one there. And then our last one is tucked in there. This is um, a spartamate, the sweetener you'll find in diet soft drinks. Um, the, again, we can discount all the nitrogens, we can discount all of the um, double bonds here. So our chiral carbons are going to be this one here, because it has four different groups coming off of it, and this one here, with four different groups coming off of it. Remember, those hydrogens, you can't see them, but they're still there. Okay, cholesterol next. I have seen them ask this in an exam. So yes, it looks horrific. Yes, there are lots of chiral carbons, um, but you need to be able to do it. Now, all of these are going to have two um, hydrogens attached to them. These are double bonds down here. So our first one is going to be this one here. Then moving along, we have this one here and this one. Moving down, we now have this as a chiral carbon. Just moving across, this one is also a chiral carbon. So is this one, this one, and this one. Um, and I have seen exam questions which were identify the chiral carbons. Next one here, only two chiral carbons in this. 
this we can discount straight away because um, there are two hydrogens. These are all double bonds. The majority of these are going to have two hydrogens. So are these and this is a double bond. So the only place we are going to get four different functional groups are this one and this one here. So two chiral carbons in this. This is the structure of morphine. Um, when we're looking for chiral carbons, and I know this is, I know this looks a mess, 2D. It's not meant to be 2D, it's meant to be a 3D molecule. Um, this is a chiral carbon, this is a chiral carbon, this is a chiral carbon, so is this one, and this one here. Everything else um, doesn't have the right number of groups coming off of it. This is Taxol. Um, it is an anti-cancer drug that you get from um, yew trees. Um, and there are 11 chiral carbons to find in here. Um, so our first one is this one here. Then moving across to this one here next to it. Moving all the way down here, we've got one chiral carbon in here. Then we have another chiral carbon tucked in there. Um, that is a chiral carbon there. Um, there is a chiral carbon. Um, then that one is that one is chiral. That one's not. That one is. That one is. That one is, and that one is. How many does that give us? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Good, that is all of them. Um, Taxol, that, that is a big, complicated molecule there. Um, lots of chiral carbons. Well done if you managed to make it that far. Um, good job, guys.